Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 51 of KSP Road to Exploration, and today we start with a launch, because as the Duna mission draws near, we need fuel on our spacecraft. So I've developed a bunch of new fueling vehicles so that we can do this in the minimal number of launches, and today we're launching a, a liquid fuel spacecraft, which knowingly has to have a fairing, because they don't make 2.5 meter um, liquid fuel um, Tanks, they only make the small ones, which kind of sucks, uh, means I kind of have to launch it like this. Uh, although I guess I could have made it out of those airplane parts. That would have been cooler. I wish I'd done that. Anyway. Oh, I haven't actually unlocked them. Still stuff I haven't unlocked. Still, yeah. Anyway, so yes, we separate the stage of the Pulsar Y. The only vehicle big enough to take up this much fuel. This will fuel more than half of the Concordia spacecraft. Um, well, just the nuclear engines. We have to have a whole other vehicle for um, the... Liquid fuel and oxidizer engine, or the boost engine, <coughs> because, yeah, um, this takes a lot of fuel to do what I'm doing. So, yeah, you can see it's shaking around like crazy because it's not super well, because it's pretty unstable, because uh, these quad adapters only, like, attach in one place, so you have to do a bunch of st strut stuff, which is kind of annoying. Um, I really wish that would be just sort of fixed, because the quad adapter should attach to all four of the things. Um, when you attach it to the bottom, but it doesn't. Anyway, so yeah, we're getting to orbit, to our messy low Earth orbit. Now we've got to go land this stage, and it goes fine, except I shut down all of the engines except an outer one. Usually I land with the inner engine, of course, but uh, nope, this one lands with an engine on the side. It works fine, but I was just like, oh, that was dumb. Anyway, yes, yeah, so in orbit we're uh, decoupling the spacecraft. It is a reusable spacecraft, of course. Um, it did take a little bit of development to make it kind of work like that. But yeah, the, you can see the propulsion is just kind of bolted onto the side, and those little fuel tanks on the side are also um, structural parts which strut together all of these things because the adapters don't work. Um, yeah, and then this will take lots of fuel. So anyway, we uh, get our encounter all set up and burned, and then when we arrive at the Concordia and manoeuvre in, beautifully kind of silhouetted against the desert, um, although you can't really see it that well from here. But yeah, the Concordia, beautiful spacecraft. Anyway, after lots of maneuvering here, we are slowing down it, hanging in space, still missing a solar panel, which at some point I should probably bring up. And then we dock to the service docking ports, which are down near the engine and kind of point downward to keep any service spacecraft uh, away from the living quarters and um, manned spacecraft. It just means that you don't have to get quite as close because you're coming in at an angle. Yes, I designed my spacecraft quite meticulously because I'm crazy. Um, but yes, and then we just start pumping fuel into all of these tanks. And I've got to do it one by one because you can't pump um, multiple tanks into multiple tanks. You can pump multiple tanks into one tank or one tank into multiple tanks, but not the other way around because that would be quite actually quite difficult to figure out. Um, but anyway, yes, so uh, after putting it in all of the tanks and draining all of the fuel out of there... Um, oh, well, before we land that, we send this... Uh, second stage back, however, it sort of explodes because I don't slow down enough with the engine and we lose the whole second stage. Except for this fairing bit, which, well, kind of later it hits the ground, as you'll see here. But yeah, that was weird. That never usually happens. I guess I was just going too fast and didn't want to slow down because I wanted to be really accurate with my landing. Um, but yeah, anyway, I, I also need to put a bunch of monopropellant back in the spacecraft, uh, back in the Concordia, because uh, the landers don't have enough. They used a bunch to do stuff. Anyway, and then we do our deorbit burn, and let's hope like hell that this is reusable, unlike that second stage. It seems to be burning up quite well. The only pro well, not burning up quite well. It seems to be not burning up quite well. Um, and then, yeah, the only problem is it's quite draggy, so I actually land quite far away from the KSC. But it lands gently, which is nice. So yeah, this is actually a pretty useful spacecraft. I may use it in the future. The Pulsar Y really does allow me to launch a lot of fuel. Um, as an example, here is the Eris 5, which is the upgraded um, liquid fuel noxidizer vehicle. You may remember the last one, which used to launch on the Pulsar X, um, and I'm still using that because sometimes I don't need as much fuel, um, carries one of these half tanks to orbit. But yes, this is my biggest fueling spacecraft yet, and it is in the exact same format as all of my other fueling spacecraft. It's kind of a uh, standalone ship, which doesn't require fairings. But yeah, this is quite sleek. It's got a shielded docking port now instead of annoying kind of fairing setup and... Um, and a nose cone that decouples. So yeah, that's quite good. It's uh, it's, it's pretty good. It uses quite a bit of fuel and stuff to maneuver, but it, it but it more than easily gets this kind of giant tank into orbit. It's nice to build these kind of spacecraft without um, the need for fairings because it means you can just put more fuel in it. And it's pretty easy. You just use these kind of adapters. That's quite nice. So we're deploying all of the things, getting ready to get into orbit. Um, we're going to want to race the booster a little bit because it's a he really heavy payload. This is pretty much right at the limit of what this can launch. 
Um, although I reckon you could probably launch a little more. But yeah, it's, it's pushing the limit of what this can launch, so we don't have a ton of time to get into orbit before we need to land that booster. But we do indeed just about get into orbit, and then we can switch back to the booster and land it gently with the middle engine this time. That was a nice of me. Yeah, landed it right. And so we'll recover that and go back to orbit. And obviously I'm not going to show too much of the manoeuvring in um, because you just saw a slightly less edited down version of that. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of refueling this episode, uh, hence it being a very short episode. Weirdly enough, this is probably the episode I've had the most footage for, but it's um, only like 14 minutes long because you don't want to see it. I recorded this all today, actually. It was uh, quite frustrating um, be just because, you know, it's quite a... Uh, Quite monotonous launching fueling spacecraft. But anyway, yes, here you can see me actually putting the fuel in all of these tanks. This is the uh, station, um, the, the Juna station. I totally forgot to mention that. Um, but yeah, we're just refueling it all at once, which is quite nice. Um, we need to refuel all of these bottom tanks and I think about half of these top tanks. And I have sped it up so you don't go crazy um, watching this video. But yes, uh, this obviously needs a lot of fuel because it's pushing a freaking space station out to... Um, Duna, uh, well, a resource station, it's not like a big space station. I actually do have a plan for replacing the Hermes at some point with a much cooler, bigger station. I'll probably mention that a little more, but I was thinking about that today. Just like, yeah, I'm going to replace it with a sleeker, better, fuelier station for different kinds of operations. Because uh, Hermes is getting a bit kind of, it's not super necessary anymore, and it's kind of a bit big and complicated. Anyway, yes, we deal with this, and it lands quite nicely. We have a bunch of fuel left over in the... Um, in the payload tank and in the um, OMS tanks, so it lands quite well. Um, we have more than enough fuel to land gently, and yeah, it lands on land. And then we also bring back the second stage engine, so close to the KSC. This is the coast just off the KSC, four kilometers away. It's actually right in line with the um, launch pad. It would have it would have landed if my inclination had been a little better. But yeah, um, anyway, and here's uh, the. Eris 3, I think, as you'll have seen many a time, my standard refueling spacecraft. This is going up to the Concordia because the boost engine needs some liquid fuel and oxidizer. Um, so we just, uh, but it doesn't need a ton. This will more than fill it, which is good. Um, and obviously the uh, and the uh, landing spacecraft also need a bit of fuel because I use some of it for maneuvering and stuff. So yeah, the Pulsar X, of course, my single stage to orbit. Uh, rocket, which is actually my cheapest rocket because I can land all of it very close to the KSC and also those are pretty old engines so they're pretty cheap whereas the uh, Starlight 1 and the Pulsar Y use the RS-25 engines which are really expensive, like really, really expensive. <laughs> and obviously their um, first stages land quite far from the KSC but still they're pretty cheap because they're reusable but you do lose about kind of obviously the cost of fuel and usually about 5 to 10% of the price um, based on kind of recovery costs. But anyway, yes, this is in orbit now, and we just need to maneuver it in, get our close encounter, um, as you do. However, it's in a bit of a skew if orbit, so I need to um, kind of do a anti-radial burn so that I can uh, circularize it a little bit, get myself in more of a similar orbit to the Concordia, and then, then I'll start tweaking it. And what I do is I, often you can't see your closest Oh no, yeah, I just have an approach around the other side of the planet. I was going to explain what I was doing with the maneuver node. I just use that so I can see uh, encounters in future orbits, which is quite useful, but not uh, relevant today. So anyway, yes, after maneuvering in, here we are at the Concordia. A rather beautiful, very complex looking spacecraft in this angle. And then we uh, just dock to it with, obviously, on the service docking ports because we don't want to damage anything with these big-ass spacecraft. Um, yeah, it takes a little while for these big heavy things to connect, but eventually they do. And then we just need to, you know, swap, switch the fuel around. And um, there's just a couple of tanks, as you can see. I don't know why I used two half tanks instead of one big tank. Maybe it was just a building thing. But anyway, after refueling that, we're just going to leave. Um, uh, yeah, and then we're going to deorbit and land this. So yes, Concordia fully fueled, um, except for... No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> absolutely not. It still needs some more liquid fuel and oxidizer, so we'll do that in a bit. But yes, uh, after deorbiting and stuff, we land gently on the ground I, somewhere, I guess. I think behind the mountains of the KSC is usually where I land these. Um, and then we also land the booster very close to the KSC, I think. Maybe. I can see some mountains, so it must be pretty close. Yeah, anyway, and then the final fueling launch you'll be very happy to hear, which I am going to cut through most of because you've seen this exact mission before uh, in this episode. This is just another Eris 4 taking up a bunch of liquid fuel. So we'll have a bunch of beautiful cross fades of us going into orbit and then landing the booster. And then eventually arriving at the Concordia, docking onto the service docking port, and fully fueling the Concordia, which will be nice. Yeah, we've got to put a little more monopellant in, um, and um, 
because I've got to actually put the monofilament in the storage for tanks. So yeah, we're going to uh, dump in as uh, all of the fuel and then just leave. Um, you don't need to see all of that because it's been a fueling episode. So yeah, but you had to see it, and uh, well, you didn't have to see it, but I spent two and a half hours recording it, so you're seeing it. Um, <laughs> actually, it was actually more like four hours with designs because of this next bit. This is not a fueling spacecraft. This is a probe bound for EVE. And it is not just any probe. This is not a science probe. Well, it's kind of a science probe, but it doesn't have any scientific equipment on it. And this time that's intentional because this is going to land on EVE and then it's going to leave EVE. Hopefully, probably not. But yeah, this is actually going to be my first experiment for leaving EVE. I um, would like to do a mission to EVE at some point in this series, and uh, this will be the first test. It is a small mock-up of a very basic kind of um, spacecraft. It looks pretty janky right now, as you'll see and as I'll explain, um, but it is very heavy. And it's got a big spacecraft um, in for probes, but it is pretty much the lightest thing I could make that I think might have a good shot at leaving EVE. Um, so if I land it on a relatively kind of not too close to sea level bit and not in the sea, um, I think it has a pretty good shot uh, of actually doing this. Um, so yeah, you can see it now. It's got a weird looking transfer stage with some boosters on it and some uh, engines. It looks very weird because it's locked. It, its main stage is three boosters using vector engines because they have very high thrust to weight ratios and reasonably good efficiencies in the atmosphere. And then its uh, second stage is three um, little tiny um, Rockamax engines uh, and we're just landing the booster here. Um, and you'll see that you'll see it a little better at the end of the episode. I do take a good look at it, but yeah, it is also pretty janky because it also has a little um, it has a little spacecraft underneath it on one side, which is a something that's going to land on the surface. And here we are, just landing the second stage. That little thing is going to land on the surface and be our communications thing. I'm not going to have an orbiter this time. It's going to land with me. Um, well, it's going to decouple on descent, and then it's going to land with me. And it's going to serve as my communications device on the ground while this takes, while the actual vehicle takes off. So yes, this is my experiment, and I hope it goes well. We're going to use an inflatable heat shield for landing because this is very wide, and also an inflatable sheet shield. Sheet shield, heat shield is very light, and also provides a lot of drag, so it will slow us down a huge amount in the atmosphere. Because I'm not sure we'll actually be able to get orbit of Eve first. We might just slam right into it. This is a very expensive spacecraft because of all of the equipment on it and because it's using nuclear engines, of course, and uh, lots of precision things. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm surprised it works because it's very off-center because, um, uh, because of the communications dish. And here we are just about to ditch those little booster stages. And there they go. Now we uh, are just on our way to leaving, um, leaving the system and then going to get into... A nice encounter with you. We're actually not going to get into an encounter right away when you do um, a plane, a uh, tweak, as you know, you usually have to do to get into uh, an, an orbit with Eve. Um, well, an encounter with Eve. So yeah. Anyway, we can see our orbit will. Oh, it's still actually. Yeah, there's our escape velocity, and we're going to start bringing that down. The map being very slow to load in today at the end of this. It had been running for a very long time. Um, and yes, now we are just achieving our orbit, and then we will do a nice big maneuver in a bit. Um, well, in a few days, probably. This will probably arrive at EVE next episode as we leave for Duna with all of the spacecraft. Yes, that will finally happen next episode. Woo! But you can get a look at it now. The bottom stage, basically, the two boosters feed into the middle booster, so it's kind of asparagus, and then they break off, and then the uh, middle booster kind of pushes it on in space, and then when that runs out of fuel, it switches over to the second stage. Those outer two boosters don't feed in, but they do break off, and then it's just the final spacecraft with the inner booster at the top, which will fly on to Orbit of Eve, hopefully. So that will be probably in the next episode. Um, it will probably arrive next episode, and also uh, we will be leaving for Duna next episode, finally. It's going to be amazing. Hopefully, and hopefully everything won't explode. Uh, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you don't mind if it's a shorter episode and a little bit maybe too much fueling. But hey, there's, it's very difficult to do this kind of big mission. And I want to take you along on the road and ride with that. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed this. And if you want to go check out a couple more videos, there's my latest video of uh, Empire Total War in which I... Um, kind of ambush a bunch of guys from some trees, it's great. And there is my latest episode of Fall of Kerbin in which, well, I kind of just attack Penguin really hard. And there are also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.